Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the demo for the Soul Reaver audiobook. Demo, remember that. This is a work in progress. This is chapter one-ish, a part of at least. Basically, um, this audiobook, some of you have heard me talk about, some of you have no idea what this is. Bear in mind, this is just a little description as to what you're about to hear before the audiobook starts. If you are not into audiobooks, you've never heard one, my advice would be not to bother with this video. This is only for people who are dead interested in Soul Reaver and want an expansion on that universe, or people who like audiobooks and are looking for something a bit different. That's what this is. This is me trying my best at that. Basically, I am writing the book. I am having a ton of fun doing it. I'm doing my best to keep it faithful to the game whilst adding bits here and there without crippling the story or damaging it in any way. I'm trying my best to keep the product faithful to the video games without fucking up anything. I feel free to add things here and there, but nothing that would ruin anything. I hope I've made that as clear as possible. Uh, the audiobook you're about to hear has had a few things changed, but I had once said in the video that I had made a demo because as I was writing what I wanted to be the audiobook, I thought, can I actually make this into a thing? Can I make it the audio sense that you are going to have? So I thought I'll take this part of the book that I've made so far and turn it into the audio book, add some effects, add this, add that, see what I think. Um, it's turned out quite well, there's a few things I've already changed, but in this demo bit, nothing's been changed. So I'll tell you the things now that I have changed. Um, so when you hear it, you might think, oh, that bit could have been better, or I don't like that bit. They've already been changed. One, there's one sentence uh, where I've said the word man too many times, and I've changed that and mixed it up. There's no, there's music and there's weird ambience going on, but there's no actual sound effects. So if I were to say the door slammed shut, you wouldn't hear a door slamming effect because I haven't added it. That was something to be done later. Um, without further ado, let's just go into it. This is a bonus video for um, my normal audience, but the reason why I'm not going mad is because if anyone is unfamiliar with this channel and they just want to see some Soul Reaver stuff or some audiobook stuff, there you go. We're going to go right into it. There'll be some visuals along the way. Uh, if you're interested in the book, let me know in the comments. All that shit. I hope you enjoy it. This is what I'm giving my all. As I said, this is a demo. It's just a slight slice. And even then, I've already tweaked bits. So, in advance, thank you very much for watching, at least up to this point. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, normal Sega Head videos will continue on Saturdays. This is just a bonus because some people showed interest. If you're not interested, I fucking watch it. There you go. Retro Refresh presents an audiobook based on the video game developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by Eidos Interactive. Tom Heather's Soul Reaver. No, no, please! Silence, whelp. You should be thanking me. I have given meaning to your pathetic existence. No! No, I don't want to! I said silence! <clears throat> Along a dark corridor that lay hidden away beneath the clan territory of the Razielim, a man was being dragged, kicking and screaming towards his doom. The man if you can call him a man who dragged the screaming, blubbering mess, dragged him with next to no effort. His strength was incredible, and his features were terrifying. Pale skin as white as paper. Jet black hair, cut short in a way that showed he was ready for action within an instant. His teeth, stained red and with two sharp fangs. This indeed was not a man at all. He was a vampire. One of the highest ranking lieutenants within his master's army. The quivering fool that he dragged along the floor was to be an offering to his master. 
Normally, he wouldn't dream of bringing one so unappetizing to his maker, but there simply wasn't time. And given the circumstances of recent events, it was important to be quick and secretive. The crying man was the first human he found, and therefore he had little choice but to take him. Unfortunately, the annoying loud man had woken up from the vampire's spell a little too early. Somebody help me, please! <clears throat> this time the vampire hit him so hard he broke the man's jaw. Hopefully that would mute his screams somewhat. At the end of the corridor, there stood a figure with the same set of appearances as the man's attacker. Another vampire. Behind him stood a great door, covered in several strange and unique locks. Jared, where the hell have you been? If you took any longer, the Master's first actions upon rising would be to break my bloody neck! Calm yourself, Enoch. I had a little trouble with the prey, that's all. You drew his blood! Are you insane? I merely broke his jaw. Now will you please calm yourself? We need to be ready. Ready? We stand here waiting for the master, and you claim to be ready? Where is the beautiful maiden you promised? You went in search of a delicious feast, and you returned with this filth? It was all I could find. You know what it's like out there, my friend. The humans are scarce. Either we have pushed them too close to extinction, or the cattle has finally become smart enough to elude us. Enoch's eyes portrayed a mix of fear and understanding as he glanced at his comrade. Despite this, he had still failed to calm his nerves. I need to know, Jared. I need to know why you chose me for this. Jared smiled and placed his free hand on the other vampire's shoulder. Because I needed someone who could keep this a secret. You do realize what's at stake here. What has happened? Yes. The Master went into the state of change. This was inevitable, but... But has he truly done so before the King? Has the Master actually managed to evolve beyond Cain? Jared's hand quickly moved from Enoch's shoulder to his mouth. Hold your tongue, you fool. If anyone were to hear of this, then we may be slaughtered. Nothing like this has ever happened. Who knows how the King will react? He slowly moved his palm from the mouth of his comrade and whispered, Our maker found me. Three nights ago, he was covered in sweat and his eyes had turned pitch black. He said, I need your help, my son. Find one other to aid you, then meet me at the stronghold's deepest chamber. When I arrived, he had already entered the room and was as silent as stone, all save for the sound of his beating heart filling my ears. When you finally arrived, I knew what must be done. I knew what it was that the Maker asked of us. He wanted me to be standing here the moment he awoke, with blood to revive his strength, and to also keep the clan organized and unaware of his disappearance. The two creatures of the night stood in silence for a moment. Even the crying man had chosen to stop his irritating sounds of weakness. But not because he fully understood what the two monsters were talking about. It was because he was terrified beyond belief. For you see, he had finally realized why he was not already dead. He was not meant for these two. He was meant for whatever lay beyond the door covered in locks. Beyond that door, there was one of the most evil beings ever to walk the land of Nosgoth. Beyond that sealed threshold lay one of the six. He had been told the stories of them since he was a child. Everyone had. There were six generals. Sons of the Vampire King. The sixth was like a walking corpse, his face stitched together from the skins of his victims. The fifth was by all accounts portrayed as a coward, but a coward that had a taste for the blood of newborns. 
the fourth was what appeared to be the weakest. His skin appeared slightly blue, and his neck seemed as if it was covered in scales. Yet him and his kin were the only vampires that, regardless of age, would be burned to death by the rays of the sun. The third was a mighty warrior, a giant clad in armor and forever thirsty for war. The second was the devilish monster that showed no fear and would kill anyone or anything for its sick pleasure. And the first, the first, lay beyond the door. If the tales were true, then, then all hope was lost. As if on cue, the door's locks began to shift and turn, as if an invisible hand was unlocking them. The two vampires stood to attention and threw the crying man on the floor. The man looked at the floor and listened to the sounds of the locks as they grew louder and louder, as if playing the man a final death song. And then, silence. Silence like you could not possibly imagine. Silence like that of the grave. And then the man heard something breathe. Something drag its feet and wheeze for breath. Lord Raziel, please accept this offering so you will grow strong again. The man slowly lifted his head ever so slowly until his gaze was locked with the eyes of a withered monster. It wore robes similar to the two men who abducted him from his camp, yet these robes were clearly designed to portray a sense of royalty. This was the first. This was Raziel. The creature lifted the man off the floor with his bony arm, and without a second's hesitation, he bit down into the man's neck. His flesh was pierced and torn as the monster held him in the air, his blood sprayed out across the floor where he once lay, crying for his life. The last thing the man remembers seeing was the eyes of the vampire that killed him. They seemed to fill with the very life's blood that was now being drained from his body. When the deed was done, Raziel dropped the corpse to the floor and breathed deeply. In mere moments, his body seemed to regain its mass Skeletal arms turned to steel like muscles. His original pale white color returned to his skin. Even his hair seemed to shift from a dull gray to the black of the night. You have done well, Jared. This one was fat enough to contain enough blood to revive me completely. That was a wise choice for an offering. Jared did not want to give away the truth of the deed, so he merely bowed and said, Thank you, my lord. All is well with the kingdom as well. No one has suspected a thing. Good, but there is no time to spare, and no reason to hide anymore. Send word to the sanctuary. I will need to present myself before Cain. The two lieutenants stood to one side to let their master pass, so they may follow. As they began the march along the corridor, Jared could not help but be shocked by what he saw in front of him. His master's back, once made from the muscles of a killing machine, now seemed to have two strange growths sticking out of it. Bony and leather-like in appearance, these strange limbs appeared to be folded. <laughs> 